Hey, what are you doing? I gotta practice. Practice what? Oh man, I'm so excited. We're making pizza today, and I've always wanted to talk dough like I've seen it on TV. So for the sake of simplicity, let's say your typical delivery of frozen pizza is just a plain cheese pizza. A level two option is to make your own homemade cheese pizza, ideally with 100% whole wheat crust. A pizza sauce that has no added sugar, part skim mozzarella, and veggie toppings. But 100% whole wheat crust is the only ingredient in all of our recipes that wasn't at our local commissary. So we're committed to only getting ingredients that are easy for you to find. We're just using a smaller sized enriched flour crust for this one. Ooh, okay, all these ingredients are just at the commissary? That's too easy. Yeah, so everything except for the whole wheat crust, but they do have ingredients for our level three cauliflower crust. I don't know if I can toss cauliflower like dough. We'll try it, though I believe in you. That gives me all the confidence I need, thank you. All right, so let's get started then. Now you can make your own 100% whole wheat pizza dough, but that takes a lot of time. To save time, you can buy a pre-made crust, which should have baking instructions on the packaging. Basically, you put your sauce and your veggie toppings on, like roasted red peppers, caramelized onions, and little pieces of broccoli. They crunch up nicely, and some oregano, and bake according to your package instructions. I've already got one made. Ooh, that looks good, I can't lie. For the cauliflower pizza though, I definitely recommend you're making your own crust from scratch. There are pre-made cauliflower crusts out there, but they tend to add a lot of cornstarch and potato starch, and the egg in it makes it taste more like a frittata than a pizza. We will also use an egg in our recipe. Cauliflower already has a lot of water, and it doesn't have enough starch to absorb more water, so we added an egg to act as a binder to keep the pizza together. We will also use oat flour instead of cornstarch or potato starch, which will absorb the liquid so the crust doesn't become a floppy mess or taste like a frittata. Yeah, let's not make a floppy pizza. We don't want that. All right, so go ahead and preheat your oven to 400 degrees, and I'm going to line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Gotcha. All right, now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and take a 10 ounce bag of our frozen cauliflower. Keeping some of these in the freezer is an easy way to throw together a last minute dinner. On the packaging, it recommends microwaving it for, four, for about five minutes. We're gonna microwave it for one to two minutes instead of the recommended time. We don't want it to be all the way done. So Keon, go ahead and put it in the microwave for about one minute. Yes ma'am. While that's in the microwave, combine half a cup of rolled oats, half a teaspoon of dried oregano, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, and half a teaspoon of salt in the blender, and pulse it until it resembles a flour. All right, How's awesome. That, chef? That's great. I should mention that herbs and spices are a great, great way to punch up flavor in the pizza. And it's perfectly fine to use dried spices. So we're gonna put the cauliflower in a colander and you're gonna squeeze out all the excess liquid. Yes ma'am. That's great. Okay, now go ahead and put the egg and the cauliflower and the oat mixture into a bowl. And we'll combine all those together using your spatula. All right. Here you are. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now go ahead and we're going to transfer the mixture to your baking sheet and right in the center and we'll mold a pizza crust with that. Alright. Okay, done. Perfect. Go ahead and start molding your pizza crust. So with this pizza crust, we're going to spread into a circle and make about 8 to 10 inches in diameter. That looks great. So go ahead and put that in your oven for about 20 minutes. All right, yes ma'am.
If you want to save some time, you can saute your aromatics and veggie toppings at the same time and add them all to your sauce. Okay, so let's go ahead and add one tablespoon of our tomato paste here to our garlic and sauteing uh, uh, onions as well. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and mix that until it's all combined. And we'll also add some tomato sauce to it and cook that together. Okay, so now that we've already got everything ready, you're going to take the sauce and start in the middle of the crust. Spread it out into larger and larger circles. All right, that's great. So next you'll put some part skim mozzarella on top. And if you want to cut back on the amount of cheese that you use, you can also modify it with a little bit of nutritional yeast that we have here. We're going to add both just for the nutritional point of it. Great. All right, Keon, and you can go ahead and put your veggie toppings on as well. All right, cool. All right, so we'll go ahead and put it back in the oven and bake for about 10 minutes. And when we take it out, we'll let it cool for about five minutes. Wow, that looks delicious. It does, it looks good. It smells good too. Yeah, it does. Are you ready? Mm. So what do you think? You've done it again. Um, you can add a little punch to it by sprinkling a little bit of red chili flakes on top. The texture of the crust uh, might take a little getting used to, but the flavors are all there. Maybe one day you'll be able to, to toss the pizza like you wanted. Hopefully so. Thank you for believing in me. Of course. I'm happy to help. Uh, and if you want to level up your nutrition knowledge, be sure to check out the companion episode, The Science Behind Episode 6, Cheese Pizza. We'll see you all next time.